Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I have something a little bit more modern than what I usually do. And the reason for that is that I found an auction for this GTX 570 on uh, an online auction page similar to eBay. And the starting bid was one Swedish krona, which is uh, about less than 10 American cents. So I put in a bid and the reason why I did that uh, was because there were components missing and I could, well I knew that because there were pictures up, some picture, and I could see uh, things missing at the uh, uh, memory. So this card was sold as defective and uh, therefore probably no one else bid on it, though people tend to bid on a graphics card anyway in the hope of fixing them I guess. But this one probably a little bit too old. So I could see there were a couple of missing uh, ceramic SMD capacitors. So I figured yeah, it could be worth uh, trying to fix that. Uh, the description said it was artifacting and uh, windows would bruise, screen and crash. And I can confirm that. I uh, recorded a bit of video of that. Though the first time I tried it, it actually got into windows with no artifacting. And I managed to download drivers, but it artifacted and crashed hard after that just before I was even trying to install them. So uh, yeah, after that it really didn't want to cooperate at all. So yeah, this is like I said a GTX 570 and I had one back in the day, a blower version. And uh, I kind of liked that it had a vapor chamber, it had the same PCB as the GTX 580. So the, the blower is kind of oversized for the 570 then. Back in the day, these were considered power-hungry cards, but by modern standard, this is nothing. This is 2 times 6, so that's 150 watts, and then another 75, 225. So they're not particularly hot or noisy, even if they had adaptation, but they were mainly based on the 400 series with the inferior heat pipe cooler and the first revision of the Fermi architecture. The Slater one is less power-hungry, the 500 series Fermi's and get more uh, stream processor and so on uh, yeah and they had quite good compute performance so most people prefer the 600 series that came afterwards i really didn't because i looked at like benchmark really didn't like the minimum frame rates even if the average were higher on the 600 series and uh, I, the compute performance was quite bad i would say so these were nvidia's kind of do it all was the like the GP GPU, not just the GPU. Even if everything from about 8,800 series is technically like a GP GPU. And th these were not as cut down as the Quadros and Teslas uh, equivalent. Uh, I think it had like a quarter the f double precision floating point performance. Like I think a lot of modern cars I have the, the FP64 completely cut out and the consumer ones. I think the titles were some of the last to support that. But anyway, I uh, kind of preferred Fermi myself. I had really good uh, experience with that. The only big issue, a little big, but uh, the problems eventually popped up when it, they got kind of old were the VRAM. There's not a lot of it on them. For the time, it was probably fine. And there were actually like aftermarket cards with uh, like not referenced that had. 2.5 gigs for the 570 and 3 gigs for the 580, so that would have been fine uh, for late years, I guess. So anyway, I would like to try to fix this, so I'm gonna put this under Microsoft and we can look at what's missing and what we're gonna try to do about it. So, here we are under the microscope and uh, here we have a ceramic cap missing. Uh, it's, this is a memory area here, where you can see all these wires here. This is uh, memory chip somewhere in this region here on the other side. We got one missing here. It's probably the same size as this one. And we can uh, like figure that out by looking at the other memory areas that are intact. So I'm guessing that's what it is. And somewhere around here is a small one similar to this. And I know it's caps because if we look at the like this white line here the corners are angle 90 degrees. Above here we have resistors and there's no 90 degree or 45 degree I mean angle. So we've got 90 there and two 45s making up a corner. They do look round 
with the naked eye. So we know the caps and we can also like figure that mostly out by looking at neighboring ram ships. So that's what I noticed on the image he put up was high resolution enough. So I usually look for stuff like that because I prefer a car that has part missing <laughs> because it's usually easier to fix than something that has looked mint, but this doesn't work. So here's another area that I didn't notice because it's on the edge of the picture. And sometimes these are not occupied and with an naked eye can hard tell if something has been there or not. So this is probably the biggest problem on this card because I don't have that particular part like the original one. So we can figure out what this is. Like I can look at an image of uh, GTX 570 and compare. Uh, so let's see here. Yeah, so you can see a part here. It says G, G29. And it seems like every memory ship or every pair, I think, has, uh, has one. So for every two ships, there seems to be one. And uh, I did notice by looking at image on the internet too that this one should be the same. And there are memory ships on either side of this one too, so it makes sense that this is a part of that. And it's yeah, where it goes and so on, what you can deduce by looking at the traces, this seems to make sense. Because they all, like this pad here, always goes to a resistor with a bunch of other resistors that goes over to the memory ICs area. So I would need that J29 part, which I don't have a spare one. And the thing is, that code what is that like most times i look these up i can't find them i did find one component this is uh, i think sot uh, let's see sot sot 23 or something is called this package i might be remembering wrong but this is sot 23 i think it's called 23 part i'm pretty sure of. so so a lot of them you can't even read the code if uh, a lot of times it's so hard to read it might have been worn out or something but I did find something, it was, was said to be a, a P-channel MOSFET, but uh, not sure, but it doesn't, it doesn't add up from my point of view with, with the pads, what I'm measuring on the pads. So for example, this should be ground because this measure to ground measures zero ohms. And, uh, and uh, that should have been, if it was a P-channel MOSFET, should have been like a positive and yeah so what i do measure on this particular card here is ground there and then we got 3.24 volts here and then we got zero volts here well technically we have on this particular pad we have 0 0.94 volts here but if we measure the same on the intact one we measure here where there actually is a common install got zero so whatever this thing does when it's mounted, there is would become zero volts here, not 0 0.94. I don't remember if it's a positive or negative voltage relative to the ground. So yeah, and that's connected to the memory, so probably pre pretty important. This is the GTX 570 over here, and here we have a GTX 760. So I'm planning on using this as a donor card. I got this for free a couple of years ago. So I hope to fix, it, fix this card when a human malware was it at its highest, so someone can have a, like a cheap budget GPU. But uh, I never managed to fix it uh, because, well, I don't work with modern stuff that much. And whatever is wrong with this card might be a little bit too permanent. I know the owner told me he hot swapped the SATA drive, got like a short problem on the SATA ping. One of the sort of pins the connector and the graphics card died like hot swapping is the system was running everything else survived i think in the computer i don't know what the sort of drive but the computer itself survived and there is obviously 3.3 volt on the uh sort of connector if it's from the power supply should be and uh, i mentioned 3.24 volts on these components they don't directly go to ground there but you know i they might have been Higher voltage going in there, maybe, possibly. So this card is kind of junk. I've been trying to fix it, but uh, sometimes it gets V-core, uh, VMAM, 
but it actually seems to be missing the voltage for the components, the, this, uh, the, this uh, G29 components on this card. Doesn't seem to exist on this one. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I figured maybe I was just wrong on uh, on how these two cards work because my theory is this is a GTX 570, which is basically a rebranded 400 series, but it is a little bit more than that. Like I said, it's actually like a refined and slightly different GPU. The 700 series, like this, is basically rebranded 600. So these are only two generations apart. So the reason I wanted to use this card is because it seems to have the same kind of memory topology, like how the card is laid out. So this card also has a small, uh, these small uh, 3 pin components. They could be a, be a diode, they can be a transistor, can actually also be multiple diodes inside of them. And they can be MOSFETs. The problem is if you don't know what the code actually means, it's uh, kind of hard to know what they are. But I figure since they seem to be very similar, maybe they actually are the same, just different manufacturers. So actually, like I said before, I had voltages for this because I measured this card. I also measured this one with a small heating on it. Doesn't run particularly hot because I have like four out of five times it doesn't get proper voltages everywhere. Uh, so, but I put a small heating on it, measured it, got pretty much nothing on these. So the ground obviously should be zero volts, but the, the 3.24 were not existing. The uh, zero volt was 20% of the time at 1.1 volts. But I figured that might be explained by the fact that there's no 3.24 volts uh, present. So... Uh, I kept looking around in these cards and it's actually these components on both cards are used in other places too. So my theory here then why I can use these is because on both cards here we have similar components down here. So there is on the J29 components around the memory actually is one down here at PCIe. And this one has components branded 73H. So you do it like this. So down here is a 73H marked uh, SLT23 and then we got around the memories here on the other side. So the, these are mounted on the same side as the memory chips. So we got one there, and one over there, one there and one over there. So I decided like yeah, if that part of this card is broken, the memory part anyway. Uh, if I measure these down here, the one down here and the one down here. See what I get. So that's actually what I did. Then I noted down here all the values I got. So the interesting thing is when I measured those for the close to the PCA connector, they are actually the same, basically. So I have written PCIe within quotes here. So I got zero volts on both. Got 2.26 volts in on the 760, and 3.25 it says in on the 570. And ground is the same. So I'm pretty sure I can uh, use these from this car. It seems to do the same thing, I guess. I suppose we find out. I mean, this is a less than a Tencent car that is broken. So I suppose, well, it could make it more broken, I guess. But uh, I want to fix it, so I have to do something. So the, uh, the plan here is to use those components from this card. You only need one. Also down here is some damage. I'm gonna show you on the microscope later, but it is a row of SMD capacitors here too. And I had another card, different card, a GTX 295 with those missing. And the funny thing was the owner said it was working. I traded it for it for something else. It was basically a free trade both ways. Uh, said it was working and the funny thing is it did work in some other words. But I noticed the board I wanted to use didn't work in. So that was kind of odd. And I figured out that the board I wanted to use was PCIe Gen 1, the board I was testing on initially was PCIe Gen 2, so also tied up Gen 3, and that also works. So I suspect these are for the same purpose, they have something to do with PCIe generation negotiation. And I'm using a Gen 2 board right now, so the card does post even if it artifacts directly after a while. But if I want to use this in a Generation 1 board, I do need to put that uh, SMD cap on back and down here. There's one missing, I don't think it's anymore. So, uh, 
think I don't think this card has one down here, but I do have another card with missing uh, SND capacitor down here, like 6200 GT or something, a really crap one. And all, it already has missing, so missing and it's broken overall. So we're gonna use that as a donut too, I think, for that. But I could probably take them from somewhere else. But yeah, I figure why not take from an area with more, more values are more likely to be the same. So that is the plan to pick stuff off this and um, put on this and hope that fixes this card. Uh, if that works, I'm gonna take this card apart and clean it. But I don't think we need to do that. I have soldered on card for teasing on before. And this heatsink does make it a little bit more difficult, but uh, we're dealing with quite small components. So, and the one we need to pick off with hot air is, uh, should be fine. We might have to do some hot air to put some stuff on here. So the GTX 570 is under a microscope and I'm gonna start by cleaning these pads. So we're ready for a donor. So this is the three pin component. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But as long as the other card has the equivalent, it's fine. I'm just adding some solder here to make it easier. This card should be so new that this is lead free on this card. I don't want lead free, but uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna clean it up. Looks like there's some black stuff there, but I can't see it with my naked eye, which makes me think this might be an illusion. Well, I think that's just a little bit of solder tricking the eye there. It should be fine. Could try removing it. We have the GTX 760 under the microscope here, and I'm gonna try to remove the 73H component here. Uh, I think this PCB is gonna suck up a lot of heat, so let's see how this goes. Just gonna heat up the PCB around it a little bit. So while I wait for this uh, for the soldering iron to get hot, I'm just gonna heat this air a little bit. It's gonna make soldering easier.
So let's see if we can tack this down here. I don't care too much if this is the best looking job ever. Uh, I can always go over it again when I have the card apart if uh, the repair is successful. Right now I just wanted to get in a working state and then we can disassemble it. So that's... Uh, that component down. We have to fix the caps now. So we have one broken over here, medium sized one. So we clean this up and then we grab one from the other cord. A bit of ceramics left from the old cap. That one too. So I think uh, this one is about the same size and hopefully similar values. I don't think it's super important that they are the same. I haven't noticed that to be an issue. Could be, but uh, yeah, I'd rather have one than not have one. And I don't know the value and I have no good way of figuring it out. With the right equipment I could probably measure it, but I don't have anything accurate enough for this. Uh, let's get hot air, move that. So I'm going to try and hand solder this one. I should really have a, like a micro soldering station, but I don't. Probably some old flux or something from the old uh, PCB. Hopefully that cleans off, but uh, yeah. Right now I don't care too much about that. See if we can make that work.
not the best work, but it seems to be there. Not good enough for me right now. Like I said, my tip is way too big and I still <laughs> like to stand on 1.6 millimeter. And we're gonna go even smaller, so yeah, I suppose micro soldering station would be nice. So the next one to fix were somewhere in the same region, it's here. So we're gonna clean that up. So I'm thinking I'm gonna grab this one and if you can hear it, it's raining outside. I can't do anything about that. And these ones are really, really small. This one's gonna be quite difficult with the iron I have. I could do it with hot air, but I really don't feel like heating up the whole area with memory chips, especially with the cooler on. I'm gonna try it with the iron if that doesn't work. I suppose hot air. Quite difficult sometimes to get the pads uh, with uh, too big of a tip. So let's see, this side, the other side I'm pretty sure took because it was still there. But yeah, I think that's fine. So it, just one place to fix now, and I said there was a problem on the PCIe side. To turn the card around. A bit oxidized and crappy, but yep. So there you can see the problem. So if you have like a 200 series at least, and you have those missing, and it doesn't post on some other watch, it could be because of that. It uh, will cause uh, Yen 1 not to work. I suspect the same thing on this, but I haven't tried, because I have to take the computer port with Yen 1 then. I don't want to do that. See if I can line this up. Should also get my microscope on a hinge and like an arm. Uh, but I haven't built that. I have to build my stuff if I want it to be cheap and uh, yeah, so I can afford it. I have some of the materials already. And my arm has gone to sleep. So yeah, I'm mostly fixing this because um, depending on the motherboard. 
obviously don't want it to only work in half the motherboards. And I did see I had this. These are on the 600, uh, 700 series too. I just didn't see them with my naked eye because the color was so close to the PCB on the 760. So I'm gonna grab one from there too at the PCIe uh, connector here yeah, at Radeon. Also said capacitor on the C cap, so good. So I'll add some flux now, and then grab one from the donor card. So we have a few of them here, so I'm just gonna grab one. I think we can flow that in place with some uh, hot air. Isn't as much stuff out on the edge here, so it should be easier. So I think that is uh, it for the components I know of that are missing or broken and uh, yeah so I could actually we can actually try the card now I think so it's time to test the car and what you can hear is the parrot I'm taking care of sometimes you can't be here when I'm soldering because of the fumes but he insists he likes building computers yeah. You like 486s? That I know. Yeah, you like 486 computers. Mm -hmm. You do that? Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's gonna be here for a boot up. He decided he had enough of being by himself in his cage. Which is open, so he decided to come here. So, let's give it a spin. Well, it's still artifacting, yeah. Oh, great. So, I have decided to take the card apart. Uh, probably can't fix it, I'm not so sure anymore. But I'm gonna take it apart anyway. It's a bit weird design though, because this plastic shroud is screwed 
to the aluminium bottom here. You can see a screw over here. So there are pins behind here, and they seem to be screwed behind here. So I need to get the whole thing off, it seems. Get this off. There are also, I think, I think four screws with uh, some uh, springs down here, which I guess is for the cooler too, uh -huh. But I mean, uh, only two of them are visible. That one is underneath here, and the other one, yeah. I don't know. It's been uh, that should be under the fan for yeah. So I don't know exactly what those are doing, but uh, you can only get to two of them, and I can see more through here. So I guess we're just picking screws and hope if we do it in the right order. And I did check the voltage on, on the new component, uh, the 3 pin one, and uh, it seems correct. The, the, the 094 was now at zero, like the other ones. Uh, paste is so stuck to the GPU it seems. It's annoying, but it is that way. Pretty dumb design, I must say. Take that. Oh well. The other one came off just fine. Have new pads if we get it working.
so that's the card apart so I can do some inspection see if I find something super obvious other than this possibly an issue so as you can see the card is running now you might might ask oh, why didn't you show what you did and the reason I didn't show it is because I didn't think it would work and kind of hoped it wouldn't work because it's actually not a fix I took uh, a hot air station, this is the 7, uh, 760, but it doesn't matter. I took the hot air station, set it to about 260C, which gave me around 120 on the ship, and heated it for about 5 minutes. Basically, what they call baking. People think it's melt solder and stuff, but it requires about 230C on the ship to actually desolder it. So I did that, and the reason why is that if I'm gonna reball it, I have to buy a stencil for that and I don't think my equipment is good enough for it or my skills but I mean if it, if it came to that we could try that but I wanted to rule out if the ship is bad or not so by heating up the ship you effectively as far as I know uh, Louis Rossman has a video on that but he basically says that the connections on the actual ship to the substrate uh, will heal temporarily so that, that's why the oven baking sometimes work when you have a bad ship not bad soldering joints to the balls uh, and as you can see after that I have uh, so far had no problems it's running a unique hev heaven here in 1080p medium settings I think in normal on tessellation so that effectively means we have a we should replace the GPU. Now I don't have one and I'm not sure I could actually do it successfully. Uh, I'm not gonna try to find a GPU for that. I mean, these cards aren't really worth it. I figure if it's if it can run overnight, which I'm gonna test now, then we take it apart again and the pads kind of broke and they kind of squished out. I want new pads. And make sure everything is really clean and nice. And if it works after that again, it can be a test card. I mean, you can get a week out of it, a month, or even a year or more. And there's no way to know when uh, the ships are uh, going bad. And you know, it can last for, for retro use, whatever you want to call it. It's probably going to last long enough. So, yeah, that's the, that's the finding, we could say. It seems to be the ship and it's probably due to heat and so on over the years also this card isn't quite by any means uh, there's, there's probably one reason people didn't like the firmware cards but like I said before I had a reference blower which was the 580 with the, the 580 PCB and cooler with the 570 GPU and I can tell uh, just by listening to this that uh, my card was way quieter I know a lot of people prefer open air coolers like this over blowers. And there are very bad blowers out there, but the really good ones like the 570 head. Because the thing with the 570, if you got the reference with the NVIDIA blower, was that it was designed for up to 250 watts and this is 225. And you got the vapor chamber in made in copper. And this fin stack on here isn't really bigger than the fin stack on that. So a typical blower would probably run at 2000 to 2004 RPM. I don't know what this runs because I haven't found any information on that. But uh, yeah, I could find some monitor too. But this is easily way over 2000. Uh, this is quite noisy. So I'm I'm personally a fan of blowers because of the better better static pressure, which actually means get a great airflow. And radial fan has worse airflow. When it's no nothing to work against, but uh, you have something called a fan curve or a pump curve if you're dealing with pumps, and but basically when you have the static pressure is when the air doesn't move at all, so that's the fans uh, highest pressure and the air doesn't move. The highest flow uh, is when you have no pressure really, so that's where radial fans are really really good. They can really force the air through a uh, long dense heat sink at relatively low RPM. Because the thing is with the axle fan like these, they really don't go up in static pressure. 
if you increase the diameter and maintain the flow, they go down in RPM, they will uh, lose static pressure. The only way to get it up again is to make them thicker. With uh, radial fans, when I check data sheets, uh, the, the static pressure seems to be exponential with the diameter, which means the bigger it is, the better. And the EVJ have had some a few cards with blowers, like the 680 classified, I think, was like this much wider, larger than an inch, about an inch longer. And that would compete with the best open air coolers within that decibel and within that centigrade uh, and the temperatures. And the advantage with the blower then is if you have a closed case, very close with the soundproofing, you get a very good overall acoustic profile of your system, like low nose. So, yeah, I really I wish I had kept my original blower card. It was better. But yeah, you sell things when they're not worth anything. That's how it is. So yeah, this card is quite noisy, but. Uh, Better noisy and broken, I guess. The card is apart again, and I would like to replace these uh, thermal pads here. They would probably be fine, but uh, well, this one ripped, so uh, and ripped in two places. And uh, yeah, this is somewhat ripped too. So yeah, and they're kind of soft. It's not a, that's, that's a good thing when you want to mount it together, but because uh, you don't have to be as accurate with the thickness, but it uh, does mean they tend to rip when I want to have it up, get it apart. And uh, they were quite dirty, I cleaned them up before testing before, but yeah, I want to replace them and I have uh, measured them to be around a millimeter, all of them. So. We could just put uh, some new one millimeter on. I'm not gonna do big pads like I've done here. I do per ship usually because it's uh, it uh, uses less thermal pads, and there's no reason really to like cover everything. Uh, that isn't uh, what you want to cool. So the ships, uh, the MOSFETs, the RAM. I suppose why they make big ones is just because it's easier less hassle but yeah it's for me just use more material material also if you lose one it's uh, not a big deal to make a new one for that and uh, these ones are a little bit harder now there's plastic sheets on both sides so but they're a little bit harder which means they won't rip and they're not as sticky so it's these are quite easy to use if you need to take it apart m many times unlike these that tends to get destroyed And I like to put a mark on both sides. So I know I removed the plastic before putting them on. Because it's quite easy to forget to remove the protective plastic otherwise.
and there's a stiffer, at least on mine, there's a stiffer side of plastic on one side and a softer on another one. I usually want to get the stiff one first, otherwise you're just gonna keep lifting the whole thermal pad when you try to get the side off once you put it on. forget to remove the plastic film here, protective film. And we forgot about these ones here, I see now, so you don't forget that. So I think that should be everything. So we got that over there. Memory there, memory there, memory. MOSFETs. I have the cooler, the heatsink. And it is screwed into this one. And four holes here. And there's a reason I did that. Because uh, these screws have springs on them, so basically it allows it the heatsink for the GPU to float over the RAM and VRM heatsink. So when you tighten this down, uh, this can basically rise up, so you don't like bend the PCB and stuff and crack balls on your GPU and RAM and such. that I don't know if it shows but you can push that so that's how that works to distribute the load properly very small heatsink I would say <laughs> something that is rated to a 19 watt TDP but it ran a 60c so it's fine but the fans were kind of kind of noisy you know So this thing is the fan shroud, nothing spectacular there. It had to be mounted first, screws in from the bottom, so you can't take it off without taking the whole cooler off. A bit annoying. Cooler. Need some paste. I'm gonna use some cheap paste. What I used before in 60C is fine. Check some reviews. A lot of these cars seems to be around 70, so I think this is fine. It uh, worked well enough. And I got a big IGS and this thing has to paste on the other side too, so that's going to be the limit most likely, so thank you, you should be able to delete it, I know a person who does this to like 200 series and also I think the 8000 and like this, and put liquid metal underneath so you can do that if you wanted to, under the IGS, then it might make more sense to use some fancy paste on top, but uh, 
basically like an old Intel CPU with Tim underneath. It's really not that uh, important, I find, I think. And obviously, better paste is better paste, but it's not gonna make the big difference. So now I want this to be like that. I was hooking up the fan, it can be done afterwards, but it was a little bit tricky. On the back all the screws are the same, so that's nice, I guess. So that is the Gainward GTX 570 Golden Sample, uh, fully working again, though I wouldn't call it like a permanent fix uh, due to the GPU being uh, possibly you know, bad in the sense that it's aged. Uh, did heat the GPU up like I said to figure out if it was the boss or the GPU it seems to be the GPU from that diagnostic since that fixed artifacting and crashing uh, other than that we replaced this component over here from the uh, ETX 760 and that measures fine works and we replaced two caps over here and uh, one here and then also well we didn't replace technically added because they were missing but there was one on the like looks like it was knocked off almost to the side but I couldn't see any cracks but uh, when I did try to reflow it uh, well reflow I took the iron one side then the whole thing wiggled on wiggled so it was kind of loose on the other side so I figured it must have been hit by something so I actually replaced one over here too from the use from the 760 so there was four caps total I think and this uh, SOT23 I think it's called that form factor and yeah and then uh, obviously I heated up the GPU I didn't show that but uh, I didn't, didn't think it would gonna work and it was more just for diagnosing and uh, yeah look at me holding a hot air station for five minutes just to slowly heat it up to 120C wasn't that fun I think so but that's what, uh, well, I wouldn't say that was the fault. Uh, the, obviously, the GPU is having issues. And, uh, technically, a reborn might fix it, but from what I know, it's more likely to be, be the actual GPU itself. But uh, this could work for a long time or not. No one knows. It's really hard to tell. Just got some paste there, I think. You can see up in the corner here, around 60C. So we're running at a base graphics clock of 750 MHz, which is a little bit of a stop for a, for a GTX 570. Uh, this is factory overclocked. So I've got memory at 1950, and processor I think is, is not the CPU, but the, 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 uh, it's the actually graphics uh, core. It's twice the twice the base we have our graphics clock and basically a shader clock I think it is on the Fermi so yeah it's around 60 and this has been running just fine like I said so we can quit this can check out the GPU here. So 
So we got the G Force GTX 570. The ship is JF 110. It's a 4 nanometer chip. 512 mm too. So should be 3 billion transistors. So we got a Robson T Muse for the Robson 60T Muse. Uh, GDR5 from Samsung, 1.2 gigs. So yeah, we can see our GPU clock is 750, default 750. There's no boost behavior on these old cards. I think it came out at the 600 series. Memory clocks, that's the frequency. And then you have to double that for DDR. Then we got the shader clocks at 1.5. And this uh, like GPU slash shader clock, like 1 to 2 ratio, disappeared after the Fermi card. So yeah, a little bit newer card and hardware than I usually deal with, but uh, well, I bought this for 10 cents, so it was kind of fun having something cheap to work with just for, for fun. And it became a video too, so if you like this, you can leave a comment, you can obviously subscribe and uh, like the video. And if you didn't like it because it was too new or something, <laughs> I suppose you can dislike too. But yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.